In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a set of AC manifold gauges, just like these here. So if you just ordered a set, you have no idea how to assemble them, I'll show you exactly how to do that. The best, you know, the best methods of doing it, and some products to definitely avoid using as well. So let's get going. So this is an AC manifold gauge assembly video only. If you want to learn how to use these, whether it's, you know, recharging refrigerant, pulling a vacuum, anything like that, I'll link those videos in the description below so you can check those out. So if you just ordered one of these kits, this is probably what you receive and what you have in front of you. I don't really use the cases to be honest because once you have this assembled it's nice just to hang this in your garage or wherever and just keep it assembled because it's a lot of work assembling this and disassembling it every time you use it. So the case I don't really recommend using. Let's look at the features of this AC manifold gauge. Okay so before I talk about some of these components I'll show you how to assemble everything you see right here. So this is the AC manifold gauges. This is where we get our readings and everything like that on the low and high side of the AC system. These are our sort of like tap adapters and that's how we tap into the AC system. Red for the high side and the blue one for the low side. Ultimately this needs to connect to this side right here and this one right here. We can't do that directly so that's where these hoses come into play here. Now these hoses right here, they have two ends on, so let's take the red one for example. This one has a straight line right here, and you can see inside here there's a small little gasket. And on the other side, there's a little pipe here, slightly different. And inside, we, again, we have that gasket, but we also have like a little bit of metal in the middle there. And that bit of metal there is useful for um, pressing things like Schrader valves, uh, for this one for example. So when that we connect something to a Schrader valve like that, that little bit of metal in the middle there helps press our Schrader valve in. So that's the only difference between the two ends here. So because these adapters here, these flare adapters on the bottom of the AC manifold gauge don't have any Schrader valves or anything like that, we connect these straight uh, sides of the lines to these right here. So this one goes in here, so blue to blue, red to red, and then yellow to yellow as well. Before we connect those in, let me tell you about some products you shouldn't use on these types of fittings. Now, it's you know kind of standard. You should never use any kind of Teflon tape, whether it be white for water pipes, yellow for gas, blue for you know anything in between. On flan fittings right here, these are called flare fittings here, you see how the threads go into like a flare right here. And if you look down this line here, the gasket is actually at the far end of the fitting, right, you know, right at the bottom there. If you put Teflon tape around these fittings, it actually prevents this flare end from reaching the end of the socket right here. So you think you have a good seal on the threads here. But actually refrigerant and things can actually escape out this back side because the bottom of this isn't making full contact with the flare fitting. So I do not recommend using any kind of Teflon tape on these fittings. So when tightening these, you can see this moves independently of the line right here. And when it gets to its tightening point, you notice it starts getting tighter and the line moves with it. So when actually assembling these, I recommend holding it in the air and tightening while the lines are just hanging free. Uh, you can see if I tighten it here on the table, the whole line moves and it just undoes. So I'm tightening, you see it just undoes by itself. So uh, two things here, so hold it in the air while assembling the lines. A lot of people say use finger strength, you don't need anything else to tighten these. I find that not necessarily to be that true. Because if you're vacuuming an uh, AC system or refilling refrigerant, the last thing you want is for one of these to pop open. You lose that negative pressure if vacuuming, you lose a bit of refrigerant if recharging, it's just not worth it. Get a pair of pliers um, and just do the tiniest nip on them. Nothing crazy, you don't want to ruin threads or gaskets, but just do a little nip and these will be fully secure and you can be confident in that they're not going to come undone. 
So now these valves right here, blue one goes on the other side of the uh, low side line right here, and the red one similarly on the end of the red high side line here. And again, these are flare nut fittings, so we're not going to use Teflon tape on these, but I will just nip them with some pliers once I've assembled them. So now we have something like this. So now I'm going to talk about a couple of things you should definitely purchase with your set of AC manifold gauges here. And this one is the half inch ACME tap here. And what that allows you to do is dispense refrigerant from a standard can. Now when you buy these standard cans, you notice your recharge hose doesn't actually fit on because it's a different size. This, will have, this has a half inch fitment here with a little black gasket there. And that goes on top here. And once that's connected, you can run it down, and then you can open and close the uh, tap on top here, and that'll have refrigerant dispense out of this secondary outlet right here. So that's really how it works. And this secondary outlet where the refrigerant comes out of the can actually connects to your recharge hose right here, and that can be connected exactly the same way. It's a flare nut fitting, so we're not going to use Teflon tape, and then we can just nip it down with some pliers. I usually don't store this connected to this because when you try and run it down this whole hose kind of goes round with it. So I usually just keep this with the can like that and put it in the cupboard, not in a hot area. And then I'll just connect this side here to here when I want to recharge a system or anything like that. Also if you want to um, vacuum a system with a vacuum pump, this might go to the pump as well. So it's a good idea to keep this with this and then just store this like this. Another thing I recommend purchasing and keeping with your kit is a UV light here, some UV dye, and some uh, glasses that allow you to see and enhance the UV dye. If you don't know anything about this, I'll link a video in the description below. It's useful for spotting leaks in AC systems, but also you can actually see leaks in AC manifold gauges to make sure your work is done correctly. So it's something very good and something I do recommend keeping with your kit. So now we're all assembled here, I'll just talk about some of the features on the AC manifold gauge real quick. So on here we have the high side right here, there's the high side uh, reading here that can tell you the pressures on the high side of the AC system. Similarly, the low side one, which will tell you the low side, it also tells you right here, this green section here, that's negative pressure. So when you're, you know, burning up all the moisture out of the AC system and pulling a vacuum, you can actually use these readings right here. For each one, there's a valve right here. We turn it left to open the valve and that will allow refrigerant to flow up from our can, which is connected to the yellow one, through this valve, which is now opened, because we've just turned it left, and out of the blue line, ultimately, into our vehicle, where the AC compressor will take it around the system. So that's the point in this one right here. Similarly, we can close it off. That's the low side valve. Similarly with the high side valve, again, we have the high side line connected to the vehicle right here. We can read high side pressures when it's connected, so we're going to open it up. And similarly, it works exactly the same way. Turn it left, open it, it opens a connection between here and here. So that's all this valve does right here. If you're unsure or you get confused, just blow down the line, find out where your air goes. You can see how the, this is all connected. Which brings me to these pieces right here. These are only storage holders. They don't do anything, they're not connected to anything at all. So when you're not using this, you can actually just pop these valves on here, on the end here. And it's just used for storage, so all your wires aren't dangling all over the place. So it will look something like this. It just keeps it a lot more tidy. Now the very last thing I'm going to mention, now we've covered everything, it makes explaining this a lot easy, is that when this is connected to our valve here, ultimately connected to our refrigerant, and we want to charge the system, we're going to be using this refill line here. When you connect a can to the refill line, this line is going to be full of air and we need to purge the air out of it because we don't want air in the AC system. So a lot of manifold gauges here have a shroud of valves so we can actually purge the air. So when this is connected to the can, 
the valve is open, all of that kind of stuff. We're just going to hold that shroud of valve down, purge the air out, and when we see refrigerant coming out, we're just going to not press it anymore. And this is just kind of like a dust cap of sorts. You know, it's not really needed, but um, just like a dust cap on a car, really, on a car wheel. That's what that's for. This this is a looking glass here, so you can actually see if refrigerant is... For example, if you're charging the system, we can see liquid refrigerant going into the system. So it's just a way for you to see through this plastic right here. That's all that's uh, for, really. And then we can, you know, be doubly sure that the refrigerant is going in and whatnot. So that's what the looking glass is for. So I think that pretty much covers the assembly of the manifold gauges and a little bit of information on how it works. If you want to see this in action, connected to a vehicle, recharging, vacuuming, anything like that, diagnosis, I'll link all those videos in the description below so you can check those out. And again, all the extra parts here, including these, I'll link those in the description below so you can purchase those as well. I just want to say a real quick message to our viewers. You! I made this channel a few years ago and its primary aim was to give you the skills but more importantly the confidence in order to tackle pretty much any DIY job you may have. In the process we've saved our viewers thousands of dollars or pounds or euros, whichever currency you want to use. I've put multiple hours of time into making videos each and every week which I somehow juggle between family and a full time job. If any of our videos on our channel helped you, please support our channel by clicking the thanks button underneath any video on this channel. You can choose how much you wish to donate, it's going to go right back into the channel towards videos, tools and everything else, so thank you very much for that. When you make a donation towards the channel, you can put an optional message and your message will be highlighted along all the comments for everybody to see. The bigger the donation, the bigger the highlight, so everybody can see how awesome you are. So I hope this video helped you. Good luck with your project on your AC system. Please hit like and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. So take care, thank you for watching.